kindly, I'm a director. And, you know, director is down here. No, I'm not the director. I'm not. It's a huge company. It's a huge company. Did you get to meet Larry and Sergey? There's like thousands of directors. Yeah. Thousands of them. <laughs> Did Larry and Sergey ever come around? Uh, no, not anymore. I, I haven't seen them forever. In the old days, I would be uh, out walking the, the grounds, and there there would be Sergey working out on the gym or you know something. But yeah, that, those are those are the old days. It's a great company. That remains a great company. And that. Uh, um, uh, I'm at the precipice at Google right now, and it's one of the more interesting things that I hope to get out of this meeting is reconnecting with some old friends and, and, uh, and considering some new possibilities. <laughs> Paul Nolan's there too. Sorry? Paul Nolan. Oh yeah. Oh, there's a number of really uh, uh, good. The guy that created the Amiga, the Amiga E programming language is there. Oh yeah, there's a lot of good people. They're either Google or Roku. <laughs> Are um, they're good people at Roku still? Uh, as far as I know, I mean Anthony Wood, of course, is there. <laughs> yeah, Anthony's there. Yeah. As far as I know, there's some media people still there. Dale's gone. As far as I know, Dale's out. Yeah. I don't know that he's out. Out. I think he's out. Out. It's a good company. Dale once has said to me something like that. He was retired. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I find that thought laughable, and I, I say, well, you know, what does that mean to you, Dale, to be retired? What does it mean? Like, and he goes, uh, <laughs> It's good the Amiga market produced a billionaire, you know, Anthony Wood, you know? Um, yeah, and it depends on, on how you do the math, what you call wealth. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean, I look around this room and I see a bazillion millionaires, you know, that, that all around this world people have, have been made happy. I got another one of those letters just the other day. Someone that saw uh, one of the uh, Making of the Amiga uh, videos uh, where, uh, you know, we talked about that we made the Amiga for someone, you know, just like you. And he, he wrote, I'm, I'm that just like you person. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, it's stuff makes me so happy. <laughs> I didn't know that people would stay. And uh, in fact, it's one of the things I might talk about here. I think I'm going to do it. I have a bunch of old Amiga stuff. And, uh, and you know, Amiga gave me a lot in, in my life. Amiga put a lot, not only, you know, a lot of joy and, and a lot of credibility, reputation and stuff like that. Amiga gave me money. Not much money directly, but... You know, with my reputation, what I was able to do with my career and oh, stuff, yeah. it gave me a leg up. I, I could see myself donating some personal cash into this as well, but I've got a ton of really cool old Amiga. Right now, Dale has got a warehouse that I've got a room in, and, and we've got to abandon the warehouse, and so I'm taking everything out. And I'm, I'm unearthing finally down to the roots. I'm unearthing all the old stuff, all the old Amiga stuff, all the old Lynx stuff, all the old 3DO stuff. And um, the, uh, uh, I have some experts, Chris Collins, one of them, is helping me sort through the old stuff and what's really valuable, what do I want to keep, what might users want to do. Do you know um, uh, those moving boxes, the big ones with the fold-down tops and fold-in handles, the big moving... <laughs> I have two of them filled with floppy disks, filled to the top with floppy disks. Some of them are labeled. <laughs> and, and so I've got a lot of old stuff to go through, and there's probably some good old memorabilia, and I have some really value items. Um, I think I'm going to talk with Dale about this as well, because you know, finally there's only so much the museums can take. And I'm going to have more. And we're thinking of doing like maybe an auction where 
we auction off a bunch of the good stuff, a bunch of the old timey really good stuff, and let some of the real, you know, the serious fans, sadly the fans with some dough, but the serious fans that would like to have some of the memorabilia, let them acquire through an auction the uh, the memorabilia. But I'm, I'm loving the idea of borrowing a, a taking a page from one of my mentors. And doing the following, we, we have this auction. We auction off Dale's stuff as well, other people, if we can get other, other people to jump in. And, uh, and raise a fund that we use for the rest of time in, to make a, 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 an award that we give away to the person or the company, the group, whatever, that during the last 12 months did the most amazing Amiga thing. And we have a committee, we have a panel, and we vote together and we decide, of all the people still kicking it with the Amiga, this one was good enough that we're going to give this one the award. And what we'll do is whatever that pile of money is that we raise from the auctions, just call it 100000 just for round numbers, call it 100000 And so we raise five grand a year off of that 100000 with investments, interest money, whatever. And whatever we can raise the previous year with making investments and stuff, that's the award money for the following year. You never touch the, touch the nest egg, you just give away the interest. Whatever you can earn with it, that's the award money. And if it's a great year where there's, you know, you make 10,000 off of that hundred, you give you, you 10,000 award or, or two 5,000 awards, something, you know, something. We could set up something. Encourages the community. But encourage the community to keep going, to keep kicking it because, but you can't tell, you don't know when you set out. And, and we gotta find a way to weight it so that it's not like, the people with the most money can develop the most pizzazzy game with the best graphics. And so they win the 5,000. I don't want it to be that. I want it to be like the most noble, the most heartfelt, the most, you know, that's what it's going to be, doesn't it? It's got to be the most, the most noble, or maybe the happiest making. We could leave it to the panel to decide that, but nothing so mercenary as, as the most glittery or the most money making for the last year. It could be that. I mean, if it's just something that just knocks everyone's socks off. There's so many different Amigas now. It's got like Brangles, it's like 20, 30 flavors, you know? <laughs> Morph OS, Vampire, OS4, Classic Amiga, Re Amigas, there's so many different classes. Yeah, I'll need to familiarize myself with that to decide how, because I, I know I'm wading into political wars with a thought like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you mind if I try something? Oh no, please. Let's try it. Who's, who's this? No, I'll know. have another two when you're ready. But oh. you first, please. Have you read the book, Archie, uh, Vulture Archie, of the Vampires? Yeah. Have you read the Vulture from Vulture of the Vampires book? No. I sent you one. Oh, oh, I have it. I just oh, haven't you read have it yet. Yes. I have a signed copy of it. Yes. Oh, nice. Thank volume you, sir. Thank you. Now, yeah. Volume 1. I like Volume 1. It's controversial. You know, the, the whole story was controversial. And, and nothing I like better. <laughs> Nothing I like better than baiting Atari owners. <laughs> because not only is it a lot of fun, but you know, I always know I'm gonna win. <laughs> I couldn't believe they got the links. They only kill us uh, in, uh, in one feature, and I, I give it a right away. They got MIDI. We didn't have MIDI. We were stupid. We should have had MIDI. We just weren't thinking. You know, and no one said to us MIDI. I bet if someone had said to us, said it to us loud enough, we would have seriously considered it. But when they bought links, we didn't they had to do NTSC either. Amigas, right? that What's that? What's that? When they bought the links, they had to. They were, it was developed partially on the Amiga, the development tools. And Atari had to use Amigas for that. Right? Oh, do you know that story? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know uh, most of the stories. I, I hope. <laughs>
Do you know the story about bidding up the Amigas and making them pay yeah, yeah. tons of money for it? Yeah, yeah. Yay! Nice. How delightful! <laughs> and even worse, the guy was a friend of ours. I don't know if he ever knew that we did that to him. Oh. Uh, but we did. And he's, yeah. He was a nice fellow. He was not the sort of person you'd really want to you know, be mean to. Yeah. Uh, unlike other people over there that I was okay with being mean to. <laughs> Commodore didn't know what they had. I don't know. Too bad Sony didn't buy it as long back then. But Sony got in that market eventually, but you worked at Sony for a long time. We did the, uh, uh, the Sony PS. Was, it, was that that's the name of the, um, the PSX? The PSX, the, the, the Sony PSX, the, the handheld. Oh, yeah, the handheld. We did that about four years earlier at a company called Red Jig that was funded by Ericsson. And uh, we had a company going here in California late, uh, early, late 90s, late 90s. Because I was already working for Fat Hammer when, uh, in 2001 when that whole let's, let's not travel for a while thing. Uh, I was working for uh, a Finland company and then October of that year, 2020, uh, uh, no, of uh, uh, 2011, in October of 2011, I said, I, I, it was my scheduled time to go fly to Finland. And I said, either I get in a plane and fly to Finland, or these fuckers won. I'm not going to let them win. So I got the plane and I flew yeah. to Finland. Man. It was I heard that's a nice country. Right? Oh, I love Finland. I've never been oh, there. I heard it's nice. Like, I, I had a job there for a year and a half. I, the very first visit, I stayed in an apartment, and the people that ran the company said, oh dear, if you're really going to have a job here, we got to fix that right away. So the next time I came, while I was there for the first trip, we did apartment shopping. They understood what kind of apartment I was looking for, and they got me one. The next time I showed up, the apartment was there, and, and I just moved into my own place. And for a year and a half, learned not only the Finnish way in, in terms of people, but even the, the cuisine, the, the cooking. I, I didn't. I, I spent the first few months cooking how I knew to cook, but using their ingredients. But I, I got in with their with the program with them. Thank you, master of mischief. Uh, <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> you know this problem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just came from a Google conference where they solved that problem. Oh, they did. Printed on both sides. They printed <laughs> the exact ah. same thing on both sides. Ah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but that's two sli double-sided printing. Who's got money for that? <laughs> but sometimes you don't want it, you don't want people to know who you are. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. That's <laughs> incognito mode. Oh, you know, I, I will admit there have been times in my life when money at companies I was working on where money was tight and so we'd share a CES badge and I'd get the badge you know because I had the money I'd get the badge but I'd share it with other people but then they had to walk around CES being RJ Michael you know <laughs> <laughs> that was could be awkward <laughs> but the security guards didn't know from the hill of Beans, so it didn't matter but oh I started working for another RJ on, mo on Monday really yeah which the CEO of Rivian, his name RJ. Oh, oh. really? Rivian Monday, yeah. Yeah, you said Rivian. Four so what's up Norma, with Illinois. They got ninety thousand trucks. They got a ship. Oh, wow. Being a quality control department. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of follow the pickup trucks. I live in Illinois. Oh, you are? <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're from Illinois. Then. Ah, Chicago is my hometown. Yeah, I've been there in Illinois too long. Uh, don't think I could ever live in Chicago again. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm far away from. The weather or the, the personality of the place? Danger. <laughs> Danger. <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, if the, if the weather didn't stop me, the weather alone is enough to exactly. stop me. But it's the, the racial strife, the hatred, the yeah. 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 yeah, normal and a little hopefully normal. Right? Yeah. 
never Normal's seen, a blue collar. I've never seen a company hire somebody so fast. Rivian hired me. We so got fast blue collar in California. Yeah. No, no, we no, don't have a strife like that. I miss that. California. We have black it's people not a blue in California. Black, black and white living together. Oh. We don't have a strife <laughs> like that out here. I don't I know miss what living it is. Here. I lived here five years. About Chicago. Chicago. I was a kid in Chicago when um, I a 14 year old kid when Martin Luther King brought a bunch of black people on a peaceful march to the park next to the neighborhood where I live to have a peaceful picnic in the park. But the, uh, uh, the uh, young, young men of the families that lived around the park were waiting for these black people to come in. We watched it happen. We, could, we watched it happen. We watched the cops leaning back against their car oh. while the people beat the other people. Oh, and, oh my God. It was a 14 year old little Bob Michael. Watched so, so Chicago's mixed bag for me. Mixed yeah. bag. Well, you gotta think things have changed tons from then. Whether or not it's as bad as. Depends which neighborhood you're in. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I don't want to scoff, so I'll, I'll not answer your question. Yeah, I, know I, Chicago, talk, so. I know the Chicago I knew decades ago, so who knows. But it was stuff like, even wonderful stuff, like when I was leaving Chicago, I went to the post office and told them, I'm leaving, so forward my mail, here's my new mailing address. And, and had like one last rough experience with the mean postal worker it just wanted me to get out of there out of yeah, yeah but away. in those days they were ex-cons and things like that weren't they but got to california same post office same color skin of the postal worker but it was like effing night and day yeah. so when you came to california you came for a job or you came and found a job, or what was that first job? So, uh, uh, Amiga Computer called me and said, come out and interview, you're going to love Amiga. They called me in Chicago, and I said, uh, yeah, let me think about it. And they called, they said, you know, the flights, you know, this Friday, can you make it? Uh, yeah, no, I can't, you know, I like really, no, I blew them up. They called the second time, set up a flight for me. I blew them off a second time. I blew Amiga off oh. twice. <laughs> the third time I had a badly hurt leg. It's a funny story. I saved a, a video game, a stand arcade, upright arcade game, with my leg, but it took my knee down in the process. But I saved the video game with my leg. And so I was in a, with a cast on a crutch, and they contacted me a third time. I was kind of bored. I was just sitting there you know, with the crutches. I was like, all right. So I went to, and they flew me out for the third time, and, and uh, that was, uh, you know, it was love at first sight. And they, they said, you know, uh, when can you start? And I decided instead of starting right away, I'd take a bit of a break. So I had them pack up everything except not my car and they packed up the rest of my stuff by truck and drove it across and they said it was going to take two weeks to get it across country so i said all right i'll i'll meet the truck there in california and i spent two weeks driving from chicago out to here and and I had oh it's just lovely I, I did lovely stuff I stayed at the Rocky Mountain National oh, nice. Park in, in Colorado and stayed at Yosemite and so, oh my God it was just California great so what were you doing in Chicago when they called you how they find you uh, Sam Dicker they had uh, found Sam Dicker who worked for the same company where I worked Sam Dicker became the audio guy. And they found him because he had an agent. <laughs> <laughs> so he's the one who got you in. Well, Sam Dicker, they said to Sam, 
who else should we contact? And he said, well, there's this RJ guy, you ought to talk to him. Except there wasn't RJ though, that was Bob then, uh -huh. Bob Michael. He said, there's this Bob Michael guy you ought to contact. So they flew me out for an uh, for, uh, interview. And what were you and, doing with these guys out there in Chicago? Uh, we, Sam and I both had worked on a video game called Sinistar for this company called Williams Electronics. And then proceeded to continue to work either together or closely with each other and dine together all the time and stuff like that. It was regular friendship stuff and you know good things. But um, uh, yeah, he, he, he called me out and said uh, to come out. And I blew him off. I said, yeah, I don't think so. And it was mostly because all my friends and my family in Chicago, like, dude, not go to California, you know, like, that's, like, that's crazy talk, that's just crazy talk. <laughs> Sinistar's still a great game. I love that game. I'm getting more and more worried that the day will come that I do actually manage to find that ROM somewhere in my garage because I've done a lot of cleaning up my garage now and that puppy still has not shown up. Do you have a billboard? The car that went into the sun to connect the sun to the media. I don't believe I ended up with one of those, no. Because I, I don't think I got one. No. I would, if possible, from you or from Dale, borrow one to emulate it. Dale probably has one. I mean, Dale is I don't the, need it the ultimate He's got a ton of stuff. You know, guys, my God, he, have you seen his place? I haven't seen it now, but at 30th, we've helped move a bunch of stuff out of there. It's like, oh, okay, so the whole driveway and everything piled. And stuff. It's yeah. two layers. He's got two layers. He's got scaffolding built inside. Yeah, no, so he no can tell him where. about it. Like, and, and he's got to be out. And I, and I told him I'd be out by the end of the year because he plans to use my space for a staging area because oh. he's got so much stuff. Just, just, just. It's amazing. Spent a few days there before the show, 30th. And, uh, yeah, and he's got to get out. He's got to get out of that warehouse. And what am I doing? I'm cleaning house. I'm keeping a small pile of really valuable stuff for myself. But the rest I'm giving away for this uh, this auction thing. Come give your money to the auction. It's for the Amiga cause. It's going to be a cool thing. I just don't know what Amiga cause yet. We got to be inclusive in some good way. There's so many different. We're going to have to figure it out. Yeah, we're to figure it out. Have you considered that maybe some people are, would, would rather get the original old items rather than, than mine? I have. The original, you know, documentation. I have my original hardware reference manual that I used while I was developing Intuition. <laughs> That's got to be a keeper to some collection. No, I, 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 That's all over it. Yeah, my own notes and stuff like that. This is like Jefferson's Bible. You know? ah. it's, like, it's like you've got the mother source annotated. <laughs> When they took my prototype away from me, I have the um, uh, the post-its that I had stuck on the prototype <laughs> collected. I have a collection of them, which includes wonderful notes. I don't remember the exact wording, but it's something like, if the flood fill horizontal line problem appears, touch ground, touch pin 15 of Agnes to oh, ground. It's this wow. lovely, li if, the, li if the horizontal line problem appears with flood fill, touch pin 15 of Agnes to ground. That's what I'm supposed to do to make the problem go away. Uh, it make you nervous when Andy Warhol used the flood fill. Like, yeah. Did you have like a little post-it on that one? <laughs> Andy Warhol just used the flood fill, he didn't care. It's <laughs> one of my favorite stories of all time in space, man. <laughs> And that look on uh, Jack Hager's face is... <laughs> <laughs> we got to get Jack Hager to these parties. Jack yeah. Hager is such a wonderful character. Where is he? Sorry? Where is he? Well, he... 
at my behest, moved out to California with his lovely bride uh, and uh, did all of the original Live for the Amiga here in California. And I'll let him and his lovely bride tell you about what happened to their marriage here in the Freedom State of California. <laughs> but they're st he's still out here? No, in, in, they're both still together and living again in Illinois. I don't know where, it's somewhere around Chicago area, but um, part of them staying together in the end was we're getting out of California and that freedom state and all of that crap and we're no more white handkerchiefs hanging on the doorknob sort of signals between husband and wife. I'll let Jack tell you that story. <laughs> but no, it's a happy story. It's a success, success story and, and, uh, and you know, still try to remember to call her once a year on her birthday. I have no idea what his birthday is. I miss living in California. I lived here five years. Culver City. Yeah, like you know, everyone tried to make me afraid of it when I was leaving Illinois. <laughs> but it, was, it turned out to be the exact opposite. It's better than Illinois, for sure. <laughs> I'm trying to get out of Illinois. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, just take racial stuff. My kids, first they grew up in, in a, a, a foster city here in California and did not have a white neighbor. <laughs> just did not have a white neighbor. But, you know, I mean, there was... Okay, I'm gonna steal him so you can talk to everybody. And not yeah, of course. Uh, Is that okay? No, I just hand me the microphone. I'll just sit right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can sit up front, but the speakers are in the other room. I'd rather sit if I can. No, no, no. I better stand. I better stand.